Soft boxes come in many different sizes, as do all modifiers. We'll just use soft boxes, for example, for this, because it makes my point easier to get across. We have big ones, which are very soft. We have small ones, which are not so soft. And you probably think you choose the size of your soft box based on how soft you want the light to be. But you'd be partly wrong there. There's another more important reason for it. You're probably thinking, well, Scott, why do you have all these different soft boxes? Why would you need them all if it's not just for softening light? And here is why it is, and it comes down to physics. And this is why you need all different size soft boxes. Right now, I'm being lit rather beautifully, so I'm nicely flattered and I haven't got all my wrinkles and crevices going on. But if I had a friend here sat behind me, they'd be in absolute darkness. Fortunately, I don't have a friend, so that plight doesn't come across often, but sometimes it may. If my friend wants to be lit at the same exposure I am, we're going to have to turn this light up. I become a burning orb, they look pretty good back there. It's okay. But what if we want us both lighting the same? Well, we're going to have to move that light further back because of something called the inverse square law, which is used in many different ways in photography, but we're just going to look at part of it for now. The inverse square law basically says light is off really quickly. If I move back a meter, I've just lost 80% of my exposure. There's a bit of ambient coming in, so it doesn't look as bad as you'd think. But we don't want to do that, so we're going to move this light really far back to get both of us in light here. Because as this scoop comes down and the light evens off, we get to a bit where it gets to like 4%, about 6-7 metres away, and then it only drops to 2. That 2% drop is negligible in a video like this. So we're going to put it 7 metres away. But now my soft box is small relative to me, and it's no longer soft light. So we're going to have to get a bigger soft box so we can have the even light and still have it soft. Stay with me here. We have to compromise a little though. See this lovely shadow I've got and this nice jawline cutting like modeling of light. We lose that because that's part of me being so close to the light that the shadows are very extreme and we get lovely umbra and penumbra to hide my many bags, chins and whatever else I'm hiding under this beard. As we go further away, we lose that. There is a fix for that. We'll do that in a different video, but we do lose that. That's why we often have very big soft boxes. But look at it another way. We're lighting a four by two meter flat lay. I want the whole flat lay to be evenly lit. We can look at that and go, right, I need that distance there. That needs to sit in part of the inverse square law that doesn't have any fall off. So we're looking at meters eight and nine away. So we know that if we want this to be lit, we need to have our light eight to nine meters away from it to keep it even. Now we can choose the quality of light. We can have it hard by having a small modifier or no modifier is what I like to do. Soft at that distance, big old soft box. And let me tell you, 3,200 watts of light minimum. We can have it specular and we can have it diffused. So it's more than just going, I'll get a bigger soft box, a smaller soft box to make it harder or softer. It's also looking at how far the light must travel, therefore where the light must be placed. We don't place lights by chance. It's not by chance that on every, uh, it's not by chance that on every pro job I go put the light here and it's exactly right. It's because I can eyeball seven meters because we often have the light seven meters away and seven meters up because that gives me even light and when it's bare bulb, hard light. I also know if I bang it out at 1600 watts at F1600 ISO, the exposure is correct because I do it over and over again. And that, that makes life easier. It makes you look very proficient in front of a client because you just go bang, there it is, perfect. Now, if you want to learn more about this, I've popped a link towards my, like, my whole fundamentals of lighting, my way of seeing lighting below. And that's a great workshop if you want to grasp all of this sort of fundamental to the light we need to use to get creative. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.